Hey guys, Steph here. So I'm recording this Saturday, March 21st, right in the middle of the whole Corona thing. So what can you do as a budding developer, a studying developer during this time? What's going to happen? So I'm going to give you my two cents and uh, well, just let me just jump into it. The first thing I would say is that this is going to pass. This is going to pass probably more quickly than you think. So uh, generally speaking, the reason I am overall an optimist about things is simply because I know how our, our brains are designed. Our brains are designed to overemphasize potential threats. Now, I'm not saying Corona is fake, not at all. It is real, you gotta, you gotta follow up the protocols put out by the uh, officials. You know, you gotta wear gloves, distancing, don't go out if you're sick, whatever, et cetera, et cetera, avoid contact. 100%, 110%. But understand that our, our brains and everybody around the world is subject to this, including the world leaders. They tend to, our brains tend to overemphasize potential threats. So if the threat is realistically this, our brains make it seem like it's this. Again, I'm not saying to take this whole thing lightly, not at all, opposite. Take it seriously because the um, risk reward favors being more cautious than anything else. That's one of my basic principles. You kind of look at the situation, you go, okay, what is the worst case scenario here and versus the reward? And going out and having a coffee uh, or partying with people is not, that reward is not worth the potential risk of if this you catch this corona thing or you spread it to somebody else. So I would not do that. That said, understand that, um, you know, that old expression is always darkest before dawn. Again, I think that stems from the fact that it has been proven in the uh, behavioral psychology that our brains overemphasize potential, uh, potential threats. Why? Because of evolution. If you think about it, you're a caveman and you hear some rustling in the woods, uh, you better take that seriously because if it is a predator and you're dead, it doesn't matter if you eat and you're not going to pick up the next day if you're dead. So our brains prioritize and emphasize and magnify potential threats. So whenever you're feeling anxiety, whether this situation here or any other situation going for forward, many times understand the way our brains uh, perceive reality. Again, I'm not saying don't take precautions. I'm going to say one last time. Do take ma major precautions because the risk versus the reward is just not worth it. That said, this will end at some point. Who knows when? But I would imagine sooner than later, and uh, we'll be off to the races. This whole corona thing leaves a lot of opportunity. Number one, I think the governments around the world are going to be helping people and backstopping situations. Um, number two, I think that uh, you could take advantage of that time to uh, build on your skills, maybe build your portfolio, fix up your site, get ready for the launch, because the economy will come back and there'll be some sort of pent up demand, I'm sure, and uh, things will be back to normal. So you have time now to spend studying, boning up on your skills, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this is all very cool. As a side note, if you've been watching my content for a while, you know I talk about FU money. This is emergency money that comes in handy, you know, just in case something should happen, you have the emergency money, you don't have to worry about paying your bills for six months or a year. Now, I, I would imagine most of you watching it don't have your FU money. That's okay. Just deal with the situation. Again, this will pass. But what I would suggest next time or after this, get that freelance job going, get the side gigs going, start saving a little bit, get your FU stash up and built. Because when you have a pile of FU money, these type of things become uh, much more manageable because you're not worried about paying your bills for the next six months or a year. So it's, again, I'm just, just a, you know, a case in point, you know. Here's a situation where FU money is worth gold. One side effect of FU money is that it's going to make you much more relaxed. Life is much more pleasant when you're not worried about paycheck to paycheck. Number two, um, it will make you a better negotiator because if you don't need the money now, you, you don't need the business now, you can be a better negotiator in terms of contracts you might be going after. If you're going after contracts or maybe looking for jobs, maybe you, you'll take your time, find a job that's better suited to, to what you want to do. 
So to conclude, yes, we're in a tough time now. I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. And being that I'm 169 years old, that's quite, uh, well, I think the I think 1812 pandemic or 1912 uh, Spanish flu, I think uh, that was the last time. Look at what opportunities this will present and uh, take precautions. And uh, as uh, dictated by uh, what the authorities are telling you, you know, but the simple things you do, you know, Keep your distance, wear gloves, don't contact, don't have physical contact with anybody or be in proximity of people unless you have to. And this is going to pass. One other benefit, by the way, I'll leave it with this. I think that this is going to have a, a big impact in terms of how governments uh, think about how this can affect the economy and how the economy will be managed. So I think it's going to be beneficial for workers. One thing in particular, they're learning that uh, supply chains should not be totally or overly dependent on remote suppliers. So what does that mean? Well, one of the things they realized in the U.S. and Canada that if you have a very high dependency on a third-party country for a critical, uh, critical product that you could need, like medical supplies or something, and if there's a, a situation like this... Uh, you could be stuck up a, up a river without a paddle. Now, this is not to say we, we're, not, we're against trade or we don't like this country. It's nothing about that. It's about being self-sufficient. Diversification and self-sufficiency is a principle that applies to individuals. You know, when you're buying stocks, everybody will tell you, diversify your portfolio big time. And I talk about personal finance where you have FU money. So you, have, you don't have to rely on somebody else to pay your bills, right? You're, 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 you're set up. I talk about that in my freelancing course. I say you're much better off with 10, 20 small clients than two or three big clients. Again, it's diversification. It's being self-reliant, et cetera, et cetera. So what they're going to see now, and what they're seeing now uh, in terms of um, in the West, especially that to have all their eggs in the Asian basket, nothing against Asia. That's cool. But the same way that China, India, and uh, the Philippines should be self-sufficient. They should have uh, representation of all the crucial manufacturing uh, in their own country, just for security's sake. I think you're going to see that. There's, well, they're seeing that in the West. So I think you're going to start seeing, in Europe and in the West, you're going to start seeing manufacturing returning here more and more, just for security reasons. It doesn't mean they're going to cut off trade with all these. No, 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 no. It's just that they're going to be a little bit more wise about the distribution of, of uh, manufacturing, meaning they're going to bring some manufacturing back here. You have to remember the last 40 years or so that manufacturing has just been shipping out of the West, you know, down into uh, uh, Asia, et cetera, et cetera, for financial reasons, really. So that a few people on top could make a lot of money. So what they're going to do is they're going to start bringing it back here, at least some of it, for security reasons. And uh, it's going to be a boom, a boom for the economy because it's going to bring in more jobs. It's going to create more jobs and, and more opportunity for everybody. So I suspect over the next two to five years, uh, we're going to have a, a movement in that regard in terms of manufacturing. Again, trading with other countries is, is good and makes sense. But having all your eggs in one basket, having your you know 80 90 percent of your drug dependency based on one country is problematic and that's what they're seeing now so uh that's what i predict i could be wrong but i think that's what's going to happen and uh what's good every country should do that like every individual should work hard to be self-sufficient because your life is just going to be much more calm and relaxed i think every country has to learn to do their own manufacturing, be self-sufficient, at least in the critical items that, you know, that every country needs, like medical supplies and so forth. Again, not a shot on anybody in particular. Every country should do this just in case something should happen. Who knows what it would be, right? It just makes sense. All right, that's it. Don't worry about it. It's going to pass. It's going to get good. And uh, opportunity to build up your portfolio, study, learn something new, um, you know, reach out to small companies, you know, it's like if you're a stash, there might be a lot of small companies, they may not have the money, but, you know, they'll work with you and you can uh, develop some uh, good reputation by working with companies who don't have money now. 
uh, get some much needed experience. And uh, when the, everything starts to roar back up, you will, have, you will have created goodwill with everybody and uh, created good skills for yourself, built your reputation more. So when everything starts to roll out, you're going to be in a real good position that way. Hope that helps. Take care, guys. Bye.